Frontier Fighters. Frontier Fighters. Throbbing pages torn from the history, romance, and adventure of those brave men and women who brought law and order to the West. A picturesque character whose exploits thundered across the pages of history was James Butler Hickok, familiarly known as Wild Bill. But this son of law-abiding, God-fearing William Alonzo and Polly Hickok was anything but wild. Famed as the best shot in the West, as an Indian fighter, town marshal, and defender of weak and helpless women, the winning of his nickname almost cost him his life. While Hickok was visiting Mr. and Mrs. Waltman at Rock Springs, Nebraska, the infamous McCandless gang of horse thieves and outlaws decided to wreak their vengeance on Bill Hickok because on several occasions he had thwarted their plans. On the afternoon of July 12, 1861, when John Waltman was away, without warning, the McCandless gang burst in the door to the cabin. We're gonna get you, Bill. We got your corner this time. You're licked, Hickok. Don't shoot him. You're ten against him. He's only got one pistol. One's as good as a hundred against ten cowards, and when their leader's David McCandless, it's a cinch for me to win. Shots and a boy knife. He whipped the whole murderous McCandless gang. Six shots and a boy knife. He's just full of wounds. Oh, the Lord have mercy on him. For all his wonderful courage, he's just a boy. Wait, 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 wait. He's One's as good as a hundred against wait, no. ten cowards, no, no, and when their leader is there, no, 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 Bill, take it easy. Uh, hey, don't fetch uh, about so wild with your arms. You ain't got a knife in your hand. Now. I, I think I'm done for. Now you just lie still a while. Or you'll start those wounds to bleeding again. I... Did I? Are they done for? That gang? Uh, yes, Bill. My wife says she just laid into him. Your arms thrashing around just like you was wild. I was so mad when the pistol was emptied. I didn't have nothing but a knife in my belt. I guess I must have gone off a little. Wild's the word for it. Poor Bill. After a man just past 24 years old single-handed wipes out the worst gang of desperados in the West, <laughs> he ain't poor Bill. He's Wild Bill. Wild Bill Hickok. And so James Butler Hickok earned the name which almost cost him his life. His encounters fighting on the side of law were many. Early in 1862, he joined the Union Army and served with honor as a sharpshooter, spy, and scout. The Civil War at an end, he became chief scout for General Curtis. In 1869, he came to Hayes City in Kansas. 
On September 8th, he was elected town marshal. He had hardly taken the oath of office when Jack Strong, a notorious desperado, began to terrorize the citizens. Said Jim Nestor to the new marshal, Bill, I tell you this Strong is 14 different kinds of a devil. He said he was going to clean out Hayes City and her new marshal, too. That's so? Well, you don't see me getting excited, do you, Jim? Well, aren't you going to do nothing? Sure, but let the stranger get his feet warm first. Just common courtesy. Mm, when I left him, he was over to Drum Saloon, showing the crowd the notches on his gun. Said at the drop of the hat, he could shoot anybody or anything straight from the hip. Where did you say this notorious outlaw hangs out? Drum Saloon, Bill. Hand me that brace of pistols, Jim. As town marshal, I reckon it's my duty to see that strangers coming into town know that law and orders come to Hayes City to stay. Well, I guess I might as well get out my bowie knife and start carving that other notch in my gun. The minute I lay eyes on Mr. Marshal Hickok, He's a dead man. That's him, Bill. That's him. He ain't discovered me yet, which makes it better for all of us. You walk down towards the bar, Jim, and kind of push the chairs aside a little to make a path for me, because I'm going to come on the run for that bad man. All right, Bill. When you get to the bar, tell him Hickok's waiting for him by the swinging door. Yeah. I'm sorry to interrupt your game, but you're blocking my way to the bar. Just move closer to your tables. Well, since when are you so finicky, Jim, about stepping on my feet? Yeah, turning over a new leaf. <laughs> Decided to be a gentleman. Evening, bartender. What'll it be, Jim? Hey, whiskey. Sure. Didn't I hear you say you decided to be a gentleman, mister? That's right, stranger. Well, you can't. I'm the only one in Hayes City. There's a third gentleman in Hayes City, and he's over there by the swinging door. Is it so? Well, looks like your marshal's got more nerve than a thought. Well, boys, get your money ready for the flowers you'll be sending to Wild Bill. Stranger, I think it might be a good idea for you to leave town. Oh, is that so? Well, how much do you weigh, sonny? I'm I weigh only 165 pounds, and I'm in a good humor, but my fighting size is a fraction more than a ton. Well, you bragging, long-haired, white-livered son of a bitch! Oh! oh. oh. Well, well, you dropped him, Bill, and, and with one bullet. Sorry, gentlemen, but you saved money on me this time. <laughs> I hope somebody saw him pull a gun on me first. Sure, Bill, I thought... Did you beat him by a split hair? All right, gents. Well, that's over. We'll really start enforcing the law. Playing cards for money is out. That's gambling, and gambling in A-City is no good anymore. Hey, Bill, you're joking. Hey, what are you going to do for your game? Play solitaire? I'm cutting out cards, too, for money in saloons in your homes. I'm here to clean up this town. Now, there's a certain lady and her friends coming to A-City, and by my invitation, too. The lady's name is Lake. If she likes the way I've cleaned up this town, she might change it to Hickok. What do you think of that? I Pitt, propose Pitt. three cheers for the future wait, of Mrs. Wait, Wild Bill Hickok. Partner, wait. The lady won't be known as Mrs. Wild Bill Hickok. If she has me, I'm not wild. I love peace, order, and decency. I never killed a man that didn't need killing. And if he needed it, he was outside the law. Remember that. How about three cheers for the future Mrs. Plain Bill Hickok? I'm not knowing whether it'll be yes or no. <laughs> Save the cheers. But if you will, the drinks are on me. I had not thought I would be approached on the subject of marriage, Mr. Hickok. What? Well, I ain't much on words, ma'am. I, I've never made a business of courting. Courting, Mr. Hickok, is not a business. It is an art. And one doesn't do it with pistols. <laughs> oh, maybe that's what you got against me. My reputation is a crack shot, or maybe it's that McCandless affair. <laughs> You're what we would say naive. Here I find a young blonde giant. A six feet three, are you? A six one, ma'am. A six foot one blonde giant in love with a woman 11 years his senior. A woman who has spent most of her life in a circus as an equestrian. I don't care what you are. You're good and fine and sweet. 
You're like a, a breath of sweet, warm spring wind fill in the valleys. You, you say things like that often? Well, almost never. <laughs> it's looking at you, being near you that brought it out. <laughs> Gosh, ma'am, you can't be leading lady in the circus all your life. I'm going on to Abilene after I make Hay City a clean town. If you say the word, I'll settle down in Abilene. That is, after I've made it a place I'd want a lady like you to live in. In your heart, you are a fine man, Bill Hickok. And although you have not proposed, perhaps sometime we can speak seriously of marriage. But let us wait. You have your way to go, and I mine. But we will meet again. I'll go on living only in the hope that we will meet again, ma'am. Uh, ma'am. Yes, Mr. Bill Hickok? Why, were you trembling? Well, I'm, I'm powerful agitated, uh, Miss Agnes. I, I want to take you in my arms and kiss you, but I'm afraid you'd scream. No, I wouldn't scream. What would you do, ma'am? Let you? While Bill Hickok, true to his word, did go to Abilene and brought law and order and decency to a rough, tumble, wide-open border town. And true to his word, Bill never forgot Agnes Lake. Two years passed. Word reached him that she was in Cheyenne. He turned his officer's badge into the council and booked passage on the first stage out for Wyoming. But not before a crowd of his admirers carried him on their shoulders from his room to the bar in the tavern and stood him on it. Never made a speech in my life. Never had to. Wasn't anything to talk about for more than 30 seconds. <laughs> Most of my life I've been dealing with outlaws, desperados, and horse thieves. And for them, you don't need no fancy words. Just quick shooting. <laughs> Say, fellas, is this here a speech I make? If you ain't careful, it's liable to be one, Bill. <laughs> well, if that's the case, I'll just shut up. But before I do... You all know what I'm going to Cheyenne for. It's to tell Miss Lake again I love her. I reckon she'll have me this time. The Lord knows why, but women is funny things and wonderful things. I, I don't know what the years will bring, but I hope the day comes when I can lay aside my shooting irons. But as long as there's one outlaw stopping the West from being called safe for the women and children who are bound to come here in that far or near tomorrow, I'm ready to pick up my marshal's badge again and go anywhere to bring law and order to this last frontier. And thus we leave one of the most colorful characters in the entire history of the West. The wild Bill Hickok that many historians present in those uncertain days at Deadwood City prior to his assassination is not part of our story. We would like to remember him as a loyal, straight-talking, straight-shooting guardian of law, order, and decency, a valuable citizen of those early history-making days, and a real frontier fighter. <laughs> 